All right, so ladies and gentlemen, when we're looking at to this, um, when we're looking into identifying the derivative from the left-hand side, um, we want to go ahead and uh, take a look at using our uh, limit definition. So we could have the limit as x approaches a. We could use this limit definition of x of a minus f of a. I'm sorry, f of a all over x minus a. And they're asking us to find the limit at x equals 1. They want us to do the limit from the right and from the left. So basically, we want to check the limit as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side. If we were just going to evaluate, though, from the left-hand side, um, we would have f of x, which is absolute value of x minus 1, minus the absolute value. If I plug in a 1, I'm going to get absolute value of 0, which is going to give me 0. And actually, yeah, let's just leave it like that. And then I can leave this as x minus 1. Now, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to leave this as, or, and then my x minus my 1 right there. So does everybody see at least what I plugged in from that portion? If you don't, now is the time to stop. Miranda, do you have a question on this? No, OK. Yes? That's technically me plugging everything in. <coughs> f of x, f of a, x, a. Right? But this goes down to 0, right? Which really doesn't even matter anymore anyways, because minus 0 is not going to be assuming multiple well, anyways. So now we need to check our one-sided limit, right? Now we need to evaluate our one-sided limit. And we have a discontinuity in our denominator. So we have an issue. So now we need to look at, well, let's look at some smaller numbers to be able to determine where exactly um, we're going here. So if I did point from the left, let's say of 1, let's do 0 0.99 minus 1, absolute value. Give a little space. So absolute value of 0 0.999 minus 1 all over 0 0.999 minus 1. So what you can see here is um, we're going to have, that's going to produce us a negative value. Yes? Oh, that's not on the bottom. I just was started getting happy with absolute value so symbols. OK. Um, so you can see over here, it's going to be negative, but it's inside of an absolute value, right? So now 4 turns into a positive value. But in the denominator, it's going to be a negative value. Uh, so, well, actually, forget about it. These are the same. We can actually figure out these values. That's going to be a um, 0 0.001, but it's going to be positive. This would be a negative 0 0.001. So you can actually see the derivative is negative 1. But if we check on the right-hand side, as x approaches 1 to the positive, we're going to get the same exact derivative. But now when we check on the right-hand limit, So now when we plug in on the right-hand limit, what we end up getting is 1. And does that really kind of make sense? Think about the graph. This graph is being shifted to the right one. We know that you can guys see that it's a corner, so we know it's not differentiable at 1, right? But by showing the left and right-hand limits, is the left-hand limit negative 1? Yes. Is the right-hand limit positive 1? Yes. So if they're asking you why it's not differentiable, you want to be able to show that the left and right-hand limits are not the same, not just say, oh, it has a corner on its graph. Okay. So then on the 